so I don't know if you guys were around ever, because I don't know you. <laughs> but if you were around in the early to mid 2000s, you know that there was this sort of like popular sub theme that honestly a lot of brands were doing. Hot Wheels, especially with these cars that were designed to crash. And they actually had like crash test dummies in some of these themes, some of these sets, some of these brands. And Lego kind of jumped on this bandwagon for one season, all the way back in 2007. And honestly, I loved them. Well, no. I loved one of them. All the rest were bad. Well, okay, here's the thing. So I actually never owned any of these sets as a kid. However, being the sort of like go-to Lego builder for my neighborhood, a lot of people, a lot of my friends who maybe got Legos as a gift but weren't really into building them, just like playing with them, would often bring them to me and I would build them. I enjoyed that part, right? And so leave it to me to be the builder introduced to many of these sets that I would unfortunately never own. And this was one of the themes that I think was the most notable because I actually really loved the crash themes. I thought it was such a cool idea from other brands. I remember getting like this big SUV with one of those crash test dummies and having it like crumple and it was so bizarre and obscure and it was always neat to find different ways that they were designed to well crash and Let's be honest, maybe you've been there, maybe you've been somebody who has crashed things that aren't supposed to, like your old Technic or Bionicle sets, throwing them in the air and seeing how long they last. We've been there. We'd gone through that phase. Here's the thing, though. One of these sets really stuck out in my mind. It's actually a pretty exceptional design, especially for its time. All the way back in 2007, the set was called Off-Road Power. And this is a pretty cool-looking set overall. It's a big truck right like that looks so cool it's a fairly straightforward design sure and it comes with all of these awesome technic panels which are pretty heavily used in this theme and i think that that was kind of an interesting thing albeit not always to its uh to its success however the alternate to this was another set which was <laughs> it just felt like um it, it was a necessary inclusion like they had to meet a quota or something it was this one right here the Toe Trasher. And I'm just going to say right now, that this I despise that. It's it's awful. It's bad. <laughs> I don't like it. Here's the thing, too. And I, I have to commend them for giving you two sets of instructions. But I think it's really bold, really brazen, the fact that it gives you these two sets of instructions, showing you building two different vehicles. But you have to get three sets to get it. Okay, I get it. They want you to buy more. Except you can't build both at the same time. You would buy three vehicles and you'd at most be able to make one, maybe two, if you kept the other one uh, built. It's so goofy. And both sets offered that as an option. Here's the thing. This is the tow trash. <laughs> this is the trash. This is garbage. Now, I mean, here's the thing. It offers like nothing there's really no redeeming qualities to it maybe the stickers the stickers are decent i think they aesthetically look pretty cool even though these stickers are for the most part kind of inverted just mirrored to each other yes i've got something in my eye but this one here actually looks pretty cool it's pretty useful to be honest you also get some stickers on the front headlights mine were kind of peeling so i just stuck them on something else and maybe i'll reheat them or something and see if i can get them sticky again but still those are really cool drum lacquered silver pieces and that grill piece is nice albeit not exclusive to this set the thing that makes these called crashers or crash as a theme is the fact that it has this kind of obvious bumper in the front here that is designed to do something and in this scenario it's not great like it's it's not that exciting i'm gonna try and show it um probably toward the end of this video just because i'm sure it's gonna fall on the floor and i'm not gonna go pick that up during the middle of the video but we'll look at it here in a minute that said though look at how gappy this is and like they tried to insinuate some kind of engine back here and have these tubes but like what what is the purpose like i i can only suspend my disbelief so much and i remember building this in 2007 and i was not impressed and the person i was building it for was not impressed and i had never even experienced these panels as a bionicle lover i loved panels like these was not impressed what i find even more fascinating too though is the fact that it actually has a Bionicle piece on the back. Admittedly pretty cool and a good use of that piece, but I find it interesting that this came out in 2007 and that's a flat silver piece. That's not pearl light gray. Maybe Rebrickable has its years wrong. I don't know and I will double check, but I do find that interesting. And to me, that just suggests that maybe 
This was mostly a parts pack, as in LEGO had some parts, not just quota to fill, but just to get rid of in the warehouse, and maybe this was one of those pieces. Yeah, they had accessory packs for Bionicle back then, but if they could fit it on another set, they'd get a little more value out of it, sure. And it works for a tow truck hook, I guess. A bit egregious in size, but the whole vehicle is that. But, like, look at it. <laughs> look at how, how far apart the wheels are. Like, that base just looks... It's not it's, it's not a good set. I don't recommend the set. That's the point I'm getting at. I think the... the... Calm down. <laughs> it's just not good. Like, I think... Maybe the most notable thing about this set, or its time... It might have been one of the first sets to come with this piece in black. I'm not positive of that. May have been one of the first sets to come with these in drum lacquered. Or these in black. I don't know, honestly. I'm not worried about looking that up either. Because there's just really nothing redeeming about a set like this. The only reason I have it is that I got it in a bundle and it was really worth it with that bundle. I think I paid $22 for three different sets, including the one you saw yesterday, which me meant that each set was about $7 each in brand new condition. And I'm not going to complain about that. Still, you know... As somebody who likes to stand up for using the color black on builds because black is like the base neutral of anything, it just goes with every color, right? So it's nice to always get more pieces in that color. But these large panels, they don't do it for me. Because, yeah, they're, they're Technic, sure, and I, I love Technic. But in a build like this, they're very hard to reuse elsewhere, to use in other things. Especially if you're someone who built mostly out of Lego. You were kind of shoehorned into this second building system you may not have been familiar with. And where else are you going to use these? Maybe on other LEGO builds, sure. But you're a little more hard-pressed to do so with a build like this. It's clear that those are just large pieces because they're large. They fill out a large surface area with, you know, minimal building required. And the building process for this, it's just not that enjoyable. So let me go ahead and show you the crash feature. It's not terribly exciting. I know I'm selling it here, really. I'm, I'm the best salesman, but you hit this forward and that's it. So uh, thankfully, well, I did catch him for a minute there. Um, interestingly, that's the first time that I've ever knocked uh, the headlight off of the, the, the hood there. But yeah, the headlight occasionally comes off because it likes to stick more to the hood than the um <laughs> than the top of it which is interesting because there's more studs connected to the base here but it's whatever but yeah this comes off so we put that one back i'll take it off here again in a moment so i can show you the mechanism here as well and then both of these little like pontoon side builds come off but the thing is when i look at it like this it's still way too long but there's a shape here there's a structure here for sure and it makes me think why didn't they just make like a cap that went over the top of this to hide that emptiness that hollowness and have these little axles knock that cap off instead so that way it exposes the inside and now it looks hollow but it looks hollow intentionally it looks like you're exposing the frame of the vehicle which you know on real vehicles can be a bit hollow it's just so baffling to me the mechanism itself is dead simple it's just a pair of lift arms moving front to back that are connected with a single linkage on the inside here it's all black so it's very hard to show you and it doesn't help <clears throat> that the instructions are also black but they're not outlined so it's actually a reasonably difficult set to build not difficult in like that there's any technical you know anything of interest going on on the inside but just like if you remember building sets from the early 2000s this is one of those so thankfully it was something they'd fix the next year in 2008 and <laughs> good time to do it with uh, especially bionicle stuff with the vehicles because those would have been a nightmare but yeah that's that's the mechanism so it just pushes one lift arm up to knock the hood off and the side lift arms up to just lift those side builds off of these axles on the side because these are not directly connected to anything if you turn the vehicle upside down they're just going to fall off which is also a really bad design choice in my opinion because i believe it's the only vehicle where that is the case i think every other vehicle at least uses some studs to connect all of its um like extraneous crash pieces whatever <laughs> so yeah what are my thoughts on the set so this set is number one or sorry eight one four zero like i said from 2007 i want i want to make sure it says 2006 on the back of this so it's possible it's a 2006 set um, but yeah, like I said, Rebrickable said 2007, so I don't know. We'll check it out later. <laughs> Still, though, 
it's not one that I recommend. I would I would just say pass it up. Like it's it's there's unless you really want like that grill and those two silver pieces or the stickers. I get it with the stickers. If you get a good deal on it, like I did, sure. Um, I actually don't have that many of these lift arms in dark bluish gray, so it was nice to have those. I do have a bunch of galley hooks in silver. I don't need more. I have a ton of those wheel pieces, so I don't need more of any of that stuff. And nothing else about it is really redeeming. The tube pieces, sure, those are cool. And I guess the red Technic uh, perpendicular connectors inside there are nice. And again, if you want like shells like these, they're great pieces to have if you're a Technic or Bionicle builder. But I also look at it like this. If this came out in 2007, or if it came out in 2006 for that matter, at $20 when it came out, Brutaka or Nocturne. Like, why would I get this? What, what are you doing? <laughs> anyway, so that's pretty much it for this video. I've got one more of these little sets to take a look at, and I was going to do it in this video, but I think I'm going to save it for its own because I actually am kind of fond of it, even though it's a fairly small one. So expect that one, I guess, tomorrow. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe because it does really help the channel out. And um, I'm going to go ahead and rank this very quickly. I'm going to give it an F. <laughs> <laughs> if that wasn't obvious yesterday i did a review on the ring of fire set from 2008 which is a lego racer set that i really liked i'd never owned it before this and i want to give that set an a i would rank it an a plus but there's just one little thing that i have as a gripe it's very minor but it's that from the front of the vehicle from a very specific angle there is a pretty wild gap in the front of it i think it can be easily covered up and if you were to cover it up, then yeah, I would give it an A+. I really think that that set is basically as perfect as it needs to be. So we'll catch up on that tomorrow. And um, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Did you own any of the sets from the Crash theme? Because I'm really interested in those. And if so, which one is your favorite? Which one's your least favorite? And if you want to take this conversation further, you can, of course, check out the Discord, Instagram, or Patreon if you want to help support the channel and purchases, I guess, like this, reviews like this. I'll see you all in the next one. It's all in the description. Take care.